welcome to our webinar. Today I'm here with our founder, Dr. Richards, and we're going to delve into all things implants with you all today. All things, yep. Well, let's get started. Let's talk about you. I mean, if people have watched the um, webinars, they know about Dr. K and me. I'm a Lakeland native. I uh, actually grew up about three miles from the office here in Lakeland. And uh, after high school, I went to college at Emory University in Atlanta. I went to dental school there as well, and then did a four-year after dental school oral and maxillofacial surgery program in Jacksonville, Shans Jacksonville. Came back to Lakeland in 1980, so I've been here now. It's going to be going on 43 years. You've been here a while. <laughs> and uh, still down here going strong, working five days a week actually, still taking call at the hospital and um, having a good time. So we've got uh, Kate Vorwald, which you can see on the screen, and she came to us from uh, actually Moffitt Cancer Center, of all things. Kate's a double degree oral and maxillofacial surgeon. She has her MD as well as her dental degree. And she did the uh, Head Neck Fellowship over at Moffitt and uh, worked as a Head and Neck Cancer Surgeon at Moffitt for about six years before deciding to have a career change and join us here in Lakeland. So what we provide our patients in the New Teeth Now procedure is what you see on the screen. It is fixed. That means it doesn't come in and out. Fixed. Upper, obviously it's the upper jaw. Hybrid. Hybrid is a term people are used to these days, you know, with hybrid cars and they run on gas and electric and all that kind of stuff. Hybrid means that the implants and the teeth don't necessarily have to be directly connected to one another. A lot of the people we see have severe advanced bone loss. Mm -hmm. They don't have bone to put the implants exactly where the teeth are. And so we put the implants where the bone is and build the teeth to rest on the implants. So it's a hybrid. If you put the implants exactly where the teeth are, you can have fixed crown and bridge work, which is a different animal than the hybrid type restoration. It's a little more expensive, it's a little more natural feeling. Uh, we don't do a lot of those because the majority of the people that we see do have advanced bone loss. Seems like recently we've had a run of just people with maxillas, with upper jaws, that have no bone. It's like all we've been doing are these quad zygomatic procedures day after day after day. And um, I, I don't know where all these people are coming from, but some, <laughs> somehow they find us. And I think it's because they've gone to three or four other places and everybody's telling them they don't have enough bone to have implants and then somehow they find us on a search of zygomatic implants or something of that nature and we take care of them and we're going to be talking about zygomatic implants here in a little while yep so yeah we can move on because yep. we do the same sort of thing for the lower arch <clears throat> by the way typically in the upper arch we're placing six implants whether it's four traditionals with two zygomatics in the posterior, whether it's four zygomatics all total, whether it's four zygomatics plus a couple of extra traditionals. So one way or the other, in the upper jaw, we're doing somewhere around six, unless it's an all zygoma case, in which case there's four zygomas. In the lower jaw, it's typically four, five, or six, and that depends, you can see in this picture, how the implants are not jammed up close to one another. That's bad to have the implants jammed up close. And so each person has a little bit different uh, amount of space. <clears throat> Some people have five. A lot of people can have five. Few people can have six. Uh, and, and we occasionally do four. I don't like to do four, but occasionally that's all you have room for, really, without jamming things up too much. But it's the same sort of a, a restoration. It's fixed, doesn't come out. Lower, obviously it's in the lower jaw, and it's hybrid, where the implants and the teeth don't necessarily have to be direct one-to-one -one correlation on the exact position. Gotcha. So. Perfect. 
<clears throat> well, also, Doc, I, um, we've gone over so much information, and so if the audience has any questions at all, sure. just feel free to type them in the box, and then we'll go ahead and make sure that we answer any questions or concerns that you might have throughout the webinar. Well, we've been working on this a long time. Did you want to talk about this, or you oh, want I, me to? Oh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't, Doc. Wanna, okay, go ahead. Why don't you talk oh, about okay, this? okay, perfect. Alrighty, so typically like in a, in a new teeth now surgery day, um, the patient will arrive at about 7 a.m., right Doc? Right. Yep, they'll come about 7 a.m., um, then they're brought back. You have to be brought by a driver um, just because like you're under a lot of medication and so you cannot safely drive yourself. Afterwards, um, our anesthesia team will bring you back to your own operatory room. We'll get you comfortable. Um, the entire procedure is done under general anesthesia and then once you're fully put under, um, Dr. Richards and his team will come in, they'll start the procedure, and then they'll remove all of your teeth, um, debridement, um, antibiotics are given intravenously, and then when you wake up, um, all the implants will have been placed, right. and then we bring you to a private recovery room when an assistant is with you the entire time, and then the team will go ahead and work on your teeth. By this point, your teeth will have already been made and fabricated. However, right. it'll be modified exactly to where the implants were placed at the time right. of your surgery by right. your surgeon, Dr. Right. Richards. Right. And then typically at about in the afternoon, the teeth will come down. You'll see Dr. Four, Richards. 4.30. Yeah, about 4.30, yeah. yeah. And then Dr. Richards and his team will go ahead and will load the teeth in, and you leave that day with temporary implant retained right. teeth. Right, right. So that's typically a day of surgery, right, Dr. That's, that's typical. And, of course, um, our facility is very safe. Uh, we have several layers of, of safety here. We have the uh, a generator, uh, just like in a hospital, if there's an accident out on Hardin Boulevard in front of the office, the generator comes on automatically and all of the life support systems in the office, you know, the oxygen and the anesthesia machines and the suction and all that, run off of the generator. Our anesthesia team consists of certified registered nurse anesthetists. And these are all advanced nurse practitioners who've gone back to three years of anesthesia school in a hospital. Uh, we have five certified registered nurse anesthetists who work for us and they rotate around uh, between uh, this facility where we have three procedures going on at one time and one day. Um, in recovery, you're monitored uh, by RNs. Uh, we have private recovery rooms, as Christine said. Uh, you know, we run a tight ship, and it's just like a certified uh, outpatient surgery facility. So, um, from that regard, you know, patient safety, you know, it's just like going into a, a licensed surgery center. Um, what was I going to say? You were talking about the uh, impressions. Uh, yes, the we do, yes. You know, we do a lot under mm -hmm. anesthesia, and, and Christine is right. You don't wake up with your teeth. A lot of people think that they're going to wake up with the teeth in their mouth. And what you have to understand is what goes on behind the scenes. And in a little while, we'll show you our laboratory team and some pictures of our laboratory. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, part of our procedure, in addition to placing the implants, as she mentioned, we take impressions. We use prefabricated guides from our laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these records that we take then go to our laboratory, which is just upstairs and the teeth are fabricated there, which takes about three hours. So if the procedure is from eight to 12, then you know, the teeth are ready, 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30, just kind of depending, because our technicians are doing at least two and maybe three different sets of teeth that day. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. But uh, that's, that's how the typical day would go. Yeah, it's kind of normal around here. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. Um, and I, I might also mention that here in our facility, we also have general oral surgery going on. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Rentel is here, and uh, Jeff is doing things that are more traditional for oral surgeons, such as wisdom teeth and single implants and things of that nature. 
Um, we also take care of facial trauma here and in our operating rooms where we do our new teeth now procedure. We also take care of facial fractures and jaw fractures and things of that nature, drain infections. So we, we have a lot going yeah, on. Here. We do it all. Yeah, yeah we do it all. Yeah. Oh, Doc, we had a great question that popped up. Um, a patient, um, a, temp a potential patient asked, um, temporaries are placed the same day after extractions, and the patient was wondering, wouldn't their mouth be too sore for that? Uh, well, the answer is absolutely not. Um, the placement of the temporaries actually protects the tissue. The temporaries don't sit in the tissue. The temporaries sit up on the implant abutments and are screwed down to the implant abutments. So, so a typical temporary set of teeth, whether it's upper jaw, lower jaw, or both, is resting, sitting on the implant abutments screwed to the implant abutments and is not pressing down or squeezing into the tissue. Now, if you had teeth pulled and you just had a denture put into your mouth where the denture is resting on the mm -hmm. tissue, that would be the case. Yep. But uh, our patients report very little discomfort and the prosthetics that are placed in the mouth and screwed in actually protect the tissue and protect the incisions from um, you know, things getting in there and, yep. and hurting. Mm -hmm. So, no, in fact, it's just the opposite. Perfect. Well, we'll move on to the next slide. So, let's see. Well, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done things the old traditional way, mm -hmm. where the dentist sends the person over and we see the person and then we collaborate with the dentist and maybe we collaborate with the lab but the dentist and the lab and the surgeon are all in different locations and so the person ends up uh, running back and forth between the surgeon's office and the dentist office and then stuff has to come from the lab to the surgeon's office or to the general dentist office and so it's been several years ago that we discovered probably, you know, 09, 08, somewhere along in there, seven, eight, nine, that that just wasn't working well in this particular type of business that we were developing. And so uh, we put in the beginnings of our own lab and hired our own dentist. And so all in one house, all under one roof, we began the New Teeth Now business model of what you see on the screen now, where the three circles come together in the middle and that's where we are, in the middle, uh, because we have all the disciplines that we need right here. We don't outsource anything. So, And this has proven to be a huge, uh, successful business model uh, in this complicated world of what we're doing, because what we're doing is very complicated. We do it every day, we make it seem easy, yeah but it really is not easy. But we make it seem easy. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And because I, we put in a lot of time making it, making it work. I know, and I feel like you've spent the last few decades streamlining it, and now yep. everything is under one roof. All under one roof. Unbelievable. So a lot of, and a lot of people come here specifically, specifically for that. It makes sense. Like so, it, I mean, like yeah. everyone's communicating, like right. you know, effortlessly, and just the right. quality control that you, because you're in control of the lab. Right. That makes perfect sense. And oh, these are our lo two locations. This is our second one, the one that you were talking about, Dr. Richards. Right. Yep. Buenos Aires Boulevard. Yep. So these is. In the villages. Yeah. And then we want to introduce Karen. So this is one of your patients. So. You can go ahead and introduce oh, Karen. Perfect, Doc. I've been put on the spot today, guys. So, Karen is from Pennsylvania. Um, she traveled to Florida to have the procedure done in our office. And so, she's been wearing an upper denture for 15 years. She had dental anxiety, and her denture probably didn't fit properly by the time right. she came to us due to bone loss. And so, we're going to get to hear her story. To go through life not worrying about your teeth is going to be so amazing. I'm a YouTube creator. Within two days and I got $200 for them. Yep, $200 for an item 
I have no clue about it. Before I had my dental implants, I um, deleted a lot of the videos that I made for YouTube because I would make a, a video and it's a little surprising to see what your teeth really look like. It's almost worse than what you think. When I first started looking into dental implants, like I said, I researched a lot. I actually looked at going out of the country because of the cost. And I, I didn't feel confident in that because I, was, I knew I'd be traveling on my own. So coming to Florida from Pennsylvania, I knew I would have to stay in a hotel. And I wasn't quite sure how much of a challenge staying in a hotel room by myself would be. But when I called New Teeth now, I spoke with uh, Shauna and Nicole, and let me tell you, I've never met, and this is the truth, such gracious, helpful people. They helped me find my hotel room. I mean, even during um, my trip there, they made sure I got on the plane safe. They called me when I landed. They brought me to the grocery store because um, they knew I didn't have a rental car. I didn't rent a car because I knew I'd be on medicine. You know, I figured I can't be driving. Um, they brought me to the pharmacy to pick up my prescriptions. So the travel was great. Pennsylvania to Florida is only a two hour trip. So that was great. And um, I had a hired driver to go from the airport to the facility. So in the morning when I arrived, I really didn't have too many thoughts because I felt confident in the surgery team. I had met everybody. I was joking around with the anesthesiologist, like just let me have a good nap. I wasn't anxious about it. You know, I felt like the whole team has my best interest at heart. As I woke up, I was shocked that I didn't feel anything. I really expected to be in pain. I didn't even need to take the stronger pain medication. The professional level, the caring, just the attention to detail at New Teeth now, I've never experienced that. You know, I felt like the whole team has my best interest at heart. When I met somebody new before I had the implants, I felt like I could see the point, at what point in the conversation they would be looking at my mouth to try to figure out what was going on with my teeth. And now I feel just more relaxed and I think it's more engaging because I smile bigger. You know, I, I think I put the other person more at ease because it's not awkward. You know, I just feel like I can be myself. So that's been huge. I was in with one of my regular buyers. They said, wow, you look young. Your hair looks great. What happened to you? And they didn't even know it was my teeth. And I was like, oh, thanks. That was amazing. I knew it was my smile. I feel like just being able to relax in life and enjoy life. And, and when you're complimented, it, it, you, it strikes you as like, wow, I'm not worrying about this anymore. Definitely life changing. Yeah. Alrighty, so this is Karen's at before and after, and I think she looks great, Doc. You did a yeah, great job. Yeah. So she was very happy. She was, and now um, prior she had dental anxiety, and now afterwards she has her own YouTube channel, and she's been rocking it with confidence. So good. Pretty amazing before and after. <clears throat> These are some of our implant coordinators that you will meet at our office when you come to Lakeland for your consultation. We have Shauna, Allie, and Crystal. And what's great about the process that we have at our office is this will be your go-to person from start to finish. You aren't shuffled off to another person in terms of communication. Your communication line will always be your implant coordinator. So the consultation will be your first step if you are interested in the New Teeth Now procedure. Um, it's about an hour and a half. Um, you'll have your, you'll come in, you'll have your CT scan, and then um, we'll kind of go over <coughs> your treatment, just things that you should expect before and after in terms of the healing process. You'll get to meet Dr. Richards. He'll go over your scan with you. We'll, he'll go through and carefully look at your medical history just to see if there's any complications or anything like that. And you'll get your treatment plan with the exact fees. Right. And this is what he'll go over the CT scan with you. And then you'll get your treatment plan. And before you leave, you'll know how many implants that Dr. Richards is thinking, upper and lower. So it's pretty. It's a pretty detailed treatment plan. Yep, pretty pretty detailed. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about X-rays and what implants look like on X-rays, and to support what Christine was just saying about how many implants we place, we already kind of sort of addressed that uh, earlier. 
So in our tool bag we have uh, traditional implants and we have traditional implants that are placed in a traditional fashion where they're straight up and down and we have traditional, let me back up and talk about what I mean by traditional, traditional length. You know those implants that are say 10 millimeters to 16, 18 millimeters long, they're just kind of traditional implants that would be used for single tooth replacements and that's typically what we use when a person has enough bone. Now we place traditional length implants in a tilted fashion to avoid anatomical structures such as the nerve in the lower jaw and the sinus and the nose cavity in the upper jaw. And so you can see on this x-ray how the far left and far right implants both in the top and the bottom are set in at an angle. In the upper, they're set at an angle to move in front of the sinus, and in the lower, they're set at an angle to move in front of the nerve canal. So this is typical, routine, everyday kind of placement technique. Typical, traditional. Gotcha. And that's six over five or six. Six up top, five or six on the bottom. So then when you get into a situation where the sinus is large in the rear of the upper jaw, okay, the sinus is an air-filled cavity. It's in the rear of the upper jaw. It's not in the lower jaw. And when, lower, when upper posterior teeth, upper molars are removed, the sinus will drop even further and it may move forward or it may not. And so this x-ray is a situation where the person had bone in the front of the upper jaw, but no bone in the back of the upper jaw. So zygomatic implants were placed to give support in the rear part of the upper jaw. Zygomatic implants are only used in the upper jaw. We're, not, we're going to explain why in a few minutes. We've added a new little feature to the webinar. So you can see in the lower jaw there's tilted implants and there are also traditional implants and short implants. So various techniques that we use uh, to, to get enough implants to support the teeth. So uh, probably nine out of, probably 90 percent of the people 90 plus percent, nine out of 10, who come in with upper jaw issues require at least one zygomatic implant. And zygomatic implants are used when the, uh, the rear part of the upper jaw ridge is skinny, when the sinus comes way forward, or if a tilted implant's not tight. So, I mean, there are some criteria that we use to decide when to use zygomatic implants. Now, um, sometimes we use four zygomatic implants. We're going to show you some other yeah. films. <clears throat> and so th this is uh, known as a quad zygomatic implant procedure where the person has no bone in the front. They have no bone in the rear of the upper jaw. And so we use zygomatic implants. Now, what you have to understand is zygomatic implants are the alternative to bone grafting, sinus bone grafting. So let's say that a person uh, has no bone in the upper jaw, front or back, and you graft the bone in the sinus, and you wait six or seven months for that bone to solidify, and then you come along to put implants you can only put implants into the rear part of the upper jaw that was grafted. The front part, which also uh, needs grafting, is a different kind of grafting where little blocks or chunks of bone need to be bolted to your bone. Yes. I mean, now we're, that other person who called in wanting to know about yes. pain, okay? Yes, the dry you, socket, yes. Yeah. Is it, is you it want to know about pain? If you go conventional bone grafting prior to implants, there you're going to experience some issues and you won't be able to wear any teeth on top of that because that could damage your bone grafts, bone block grafts. So zygomatic implants 
basically take care of the bone grafting issue. There is no bone grafting with zygoma implants. They are placed, they're strong, they're the strongest implant we place. They're like a rock and when we put those in we attach teeth to them the same day. Attach a teeth to them the same day, no bone grafting, no pain. You do have some swelling but typically, I mean all the swelling is temporary. So the zygoma implants have been a game changer. I've been placing zygoma implants since 2006 and it's a pretty steep learning curve <coughs> um, which both Dr. Kirkpatrick and I have blown through that learning curve in the first probably 500 or 1,000 zygomas we placed each. Um, we do them now routinely. We each probably place eight to 10 zygomatic implants a week. So we do a lot of zygomatic implants because we see a lot of people that need them who don't want bone grafting. So um, I think we have that's kind of where we are. Yeah. I think we have patients traveling from all over 50 states now to come see you guys because we do. of the fact that you are the experts in placing zygomatic implants. Tomorrow a guy from Pennsylvania is a quad and um, yep, we, we see a lot of people from, I think we've done every state in the... I think so. I think you've hit all 50 states. Including Alaska. We've yep. done four or five people out of there. Exactly. So I, it's, so. it's a testament to what you guys do. It, I, I think you wanted to show some an example of like the new tool that we've. I do, yeah. I had asked it. I had asked the team to uh, put something together so we could actually show some interactive um, stuff. I like this picture because the patients like it, and you can kind of see. But anyway, this is a skull of somebody before they had some work done. And what I wanted to show is this is the zygoma bone right here. It's the cheekbone. This is your eye socket and the nose opening and the eye socket. And this is the zygoma. The zygoma forms part of the eye socket from about here up to about there. And it goes back. There's this arch here. You can also, as a side note, see these teeth in the lower. Here's the little nerve hole in the lower jaw. Uh, teeth with bone loss around them here in the lower jaw and here's the zygoma. So this person had very little bone. We can see, you can see, there's hardly anything up here. And so, you know, the answer was doing the zygomatic implant. So, let's see here. So this is the after x-ray of that same individual. And this is the so-called quad zygoma. And so you can see how the zygoma implants, <coughs> excuse me, uh, plug into the cheekbone. They're long and they plug in through the jaw ridge. They're covered with bone down here and then these are impression posts that we put onto the abutment parts. All that's very technical um, and the same down here. And so this would be kind of a standard um, quad zygoma. So this is the procedure I did this morning and similar to I think one that you saw earlier where there was uh, a quad zygoma so there's four zygomas they go back pretty far four zygomas plus two traditional implants in the front just for some added security I mean this is incredibly strong And so this person got their teeth and left the office today about five o'clock. Four implants in the lower. Stand away from the nerve here in the jaw type situation. You can see if this implant had to come straight down, it would go right through the nerve. <clears throat> but by tilting it forward, we, we can put a long implant in without uh, damaging the nerve. So anyway, We'll probably expand this feature in future webinars mm -hmm. 
but um, this is our first uh, attempt and I, I like it I and we'll be able to show some more kind of cool stuff. I think it's a great I think it's a great tool I think it helps explain things to patient and gives yep. them another perspective yep. that the perspective that yep. you see um, doc a great question <coughs> came up during uh, you know a couple seconds ago but are there any ever any issues when there's not enough bone on the bottom arch and if so how do we handle that well there can't there can be I mean some people have these pencil thin mm -hmm. uh, mandibles and we do some grafting uh, there are a couple of solutions in the lower uh, one is to do some grafting to stage the procedure. Uh, I, I could pull another film, but it might take too much time. But in the lower jaw, you can actually borrow some bone from back here mm -hmm. in a person's lower jaw in the form of small little squares or rectangles. And you can bring them up to the lower jaw and uh, basically mortise them in, mm -hmm. bolt them down. Uh, so that's one solution to a really, really, really small jaw. Now the jaw could be small vertically mm -hmm. or it could be small in the horizontal or the width yeah. frame. More often they're short vertically but they're wide. And so um, there's another type of implant called a subperiosteal implant that can be computer uh, generated and placed and put onto the jaw and, and a subperiosteal implant may come with a prefabricated temporary set of teeth mm -hmm. and that does not involve bone grafting. So there are a couple of solutions for the lower jaw, one being to do some grafting in the lower jaw, which is more simple than grafting in the upper jaw. And, but it still requires that you not wear teeth or anything to damage the bone grafting. Uh, but the other solution is subperiosteal implant. Gotcha. In the old days, we used to take an impression of the bone <clears throat> to do, we, so we would cut the tissue and peel it back and take an impression of the bone and then stitch it back up and then we'd send the impressions out to a lab in Leewood, Kansas called Root Dental Lab and they would pour everything and mount the bone model so they would actually create a bone model and then they would build the implant on the bone model and send it back with a prefabricated set of teeth. Uh, nowadays with the CT scans they can take the CT scan and build a computerized uh, mandible so they can actually mill out a mandible, yeah. mill out an exact copy of the person's jaw, which is much more accurate than taking the impression, and then build a subperiosteal on that jawbone, the milled jawbone, and then we can bring it to the mouth and put it put it on the jaw. That's so fun. yeah. So they have quite a bit of solutions if yeah. they are in that. Yeah, case if they are really body. down to pencil thin, nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll move into our, the next section of our <coughs> webinar. So this is Dr. We have Dr. Richard's team. He's been working with them for quite some time. So these are the ladies that help you make it happen. Right. We've got a, um, a good team of, of ladies. Uh, Dr. K has a team. Mm -hmm. I've got a team now. Dr. Vorwald has a team. And uh, so they're the workhorses of the crew. And uh, they, you know, or when people come in for checkup visits, they're taking teeth in mm -hmm. and out and cleaning them and putting things back together. So they are very fluent in all of the parts and pieces and drivers and everything. Wait. So. I couldn't do what I do without the ladies doing what they do. We know? like to joke around. Yeah. I know you like to joke around in your OR that they could do the surgery for you. Well, you know, there's some of them that have seen so much, you know, for yeah. 10, 15 years that they probably could just about do it, you know. <laughs> anyway, well, we've got our, I see we have our restorative dentist back there mm -hmm. hiding. Uh, Dr. Dibbs, the gentleman in the middle, was the first a restorative dentist that we hired and um, Dr. Dibbs has been with us I'm thinking I'm thinking eight years maybe eight nine maybe ten years um, let's see we opened the new building in 13 Dibbs had to Jason come around then sometime when the lab was open so uh, Elliot Elliot does a great job 
Um, he knows his stuff. Um, the, Dr. Nafala is a general restorative dentist here in town whose office is right down the street, one mile down the street. And he's over here a lot. I think he's over here all day on Fridays and back and forth at other times. And then uh, we had the need for another restorative dentist, and so we hired Dr. Sorrento, and he's our uh, Northeastern connection. Um, kind of keep us diversified here. Have somebody from the Northeast. I think uh, kind of a suburb of Boston, yeah. maybe. And uh, so anyway, uh, Sorrento's character, he likes to play the guitar and dress up like Johnny Cash. And, <laughs> <laughs> you, you get know. the easy part. And yeah. so, well, let's hear from Dr. Dibbs himself. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That You can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the, the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about, can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall, and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note. They can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists. And they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. And I don't know of any other office that's like this. Um, our temp one of our potential patients had a really great question, two great questions actually. And so the first one was, do the temporaries have a gap between the gum and the teeth? And the second is? And the is, second is, when they get their permanent teeth, is there also a gap as well? All right, I'm glad you asked that because <clears throat> it kind of leads into why we wait to put the final teeth in. Mm -hmm. You know, some people who do yeah. this make the final teeth like the next day you get your final teeth. So after much, you know, do, after doing this for a long time and seeing how the tissue in the mouth reacts after the procedure, there's swelling, then there's shrinkage, we never have had good luck making the final teeth too soon because then things shrink up and gaps develop and then the people are back wanting the gaps filled in. Mm -hmm. So our solution initially was that everybody goes home on the day of the surgery with acrylic teeth. And those acrylic teeth, they pretty much fit the gums pretty tight to answer that question. Yeah. No, there's no big gaps. On the day you leave, no big gaps, no little gaps. <clears throat> when you come back in a week, sometimes we have to actually take those teeth out and grind away some of the plastic mm -hmm. because maybe it's pushing on the tissue a little too much. So our solution to this had, was initially to make a second set of upgraded temporary teeth. So the person comes back for their first checkup visit in a week. We look at them. 
I don't have any teeth up here. But anyway, you know, what we're looking at is we're looking at the midline. Mm -hmm. We're looking to see if there's any kind of cant in the way the teeth come together. And we're looking at the position of the upper four or six front teeth. Are they too far up under the lip? Are they too far down? Or are they just about right? And so we can make corrections in the computer. Mm -hmm. So let's say we don't have to make any corrections that the acrylic teeth, midline's on, tooth looks good vertically, there's no cant. And so we would duplicate those teeth initially in a milled plastic material. So we did that for a while. <clears throat> because to do it in zirconia, we just weren't geared up for that. We, we just didn't have the horsepower in our lab to start providing temporary zirconias to everybody. Well, we ended up buying a laboratory technician's building who was shutting down his business, and we have upgraded that. And so now our solution to fix what that question relates to is, everybody comes back in a week, we look at the midline, we look at the lip line, we see if there's any cant, and then we mill out a set of zirconia teeth. Zirconia teeth. Now the zirconia is what the final material is made of. So we're milling out a set of zirconia teeth and putting those into the person's mouth, but we do not consider those to be the final teeth. Those are interim temporary teeth. So the person then leaves, whether they're, if they're going far away, they go, they're in the local in the area, they, you know, and they're wearing zirconia teeth. We check them in a month. We check them again in two months. And after five or six months of wearing the zirconia temporaries, we then make the zirconia final teeth. So there's three sets of teeth. There's the original acrylic plastic teeth that a person gets on the day of the procedure. There are no big gaps under those teeth. Then the person comes back in a week or so. I'm just kind of summarizing that. They come back in a week or so. We assess the situation for midline, lip line, and any cant. And we, we can make corrections in the computer and mill out zirconia teeth, which go into the person's mouth. And they wear those for five or six months because we consider those to be provisionals. Then, after five or six months, all of the shrinkage will have taken place. And as an added side benefit, the person has had the opportunity to test drive those teeth for exactly. five months. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we know people get all sorts of input. They've got husbands, they've got wives, they have best girlfriends, they got daughters and sons, and everybody who's saying, you know, oh my God, those teeth are too dark or too white or too little or too large or this, that, or the other. And so everybody always wants to make some changes. Exactly. And so you get your final teeth the day after the procedure and you go home and your best girlfriend looks at you and goes, gee, you know, what have you done? You know, you're going to come back and want to have another set of teeth made and somebody's going to charge you for that. Our process, you're going to get temporary teeth and then final teeth down the road, and there's no upcharge for that. There's no extra charge. It's all included in our global fee, which includes everything. So the teeth that are made at the end will follow the gum line. If the gum line is irregular, the teeth are going to follow it. So there are no gaps at the end. And if something goes astray in the middle, <laughs> we take care of it. So, you know, we service what we sell. I mean, you have to in this business. If not, you know, people can go and do Google reviews and blow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have pretty great Google reviews, you know, so let's keep so, it that way. <laughs> I mean, we, we do everything ex except, I, you know, turn backflips. I'd probably break my back if I tried that. But I mean, <laughs> we, we literally do everything we can. I mean, customer satisfaction, it's like, that's where it's at. I think so you, you really care about the patient and it shows like we have so many patients that come yeah. from their family recommendations and things yeah, like that. We do. And so yeah, I think so um, anyway, that's our answer to yep. 
the upgraded temporary uh, situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think speaking of the temporaries and the permanent teeth, this the next slide kind of shows the people who work on your teeth. So this is the our, lab people. Yep. This See, is I went team. too long. You yeah. let me talk too much. <laughs> Well, this I is usually our, like to get out of here. This is our, well, this is our team that works with Dr. Richards and all of our surgeons and our restorative dentists to give you the smile that you end up with. This is the milling center that we talked about. Um, we just bought it. It's great. Um, this is where all the yep. work is done for all the zirconia teeth. And then these are two different sets of teeth. The bottom is an acrylic set, and then the top is their zirconia set. Um, and these are about five years yep. old. And so you can kind of see the difference between an acrylic set of teeth versus a zirconia final set of teeth. And that's what you know I was saying. We have virtually eliminated acrylic from our yep. practice, except for the first week or so. Yep. So we definitely, um, yeah, I think there are some practices out there that offer final acrylic teeth. So there probably are. So. Yeah you can kind of see the reasons why you would want to make sure that your final is made from zirconia. And this is the process in our, kind of like the summarized process of right. what new teeth now would look like <clears throat> for the patient. So, yeah. So, we didn't talk a lot about pre-op, mm -hmm. but and I did mention something about safety and that sort of thing with the nurses, mm -hmm. the, you know, and the anesthesia and the way we do all that. Well, you know, you have to understand that the age bracket of the average person is probably somewhere up in the 60, high six, mid to high 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uncommon. I did a quadzygomanic Friday week ago on an 81-year-old. We see 80 and 81-year-old mm -hmm. people all the time who go to sleep uh, and have this done. So we get medical clearances. So if a person comes in that's 30 or 35 and they're on no medicines and they never have ever had a heart problem or a lung problem and they don't smoke and, you know, they're just like the picture of health, you know, we get some lab work and we do their procedure mm -hmm. and we don't get a medical clearance. We don't get, uh, you know, chest x-rays and cardiograms and all that kind of stuff. But for the routine average person who's coming in, who's up in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, or 80s, we're getting a medical clearance from their primary care physician, or if they're also seeing a cardiologist, we get a medical clearance from their cardiologist, yep. or if they're also seeing a pulmonary doctor or endocrinologist or whoever they are seeing, for whatever reason, we get a written medical clearance. So, and that's in addition to blood work, cardiograms, and, and all of that kind of thing. So as I was saying earlier, you know, we run things by the book. I mean, our CRNAs, they run the anesthesia department by the book. Yep. That's, just all there, that's just all there is to it. We haven't had any anesthesia misadventures, um, and we don't anticipate having any yes, anesthesia we misadventures, we but don't. we are crossing our T's and dotting our I's when it comes to your health and your safety, and that comes first. Yep, you come in for the consultation, you have the pre-op and the impressions, we move to surgery day, <clears throat> then you have a couple of post-ops with Dr. Richards, and then your final teeth are created once Dr. Richards gives a restorative doctor the clearance that you're ready to have your final teeth, and then we place the finals, and that's basically the new teeth yep. now process. That's pretty much it. So this person wanted to know, what does a typical patient say the, prosth the prosthesis feels like in their mouth? The typical person says that in about three to four weeks, it disappears in their mouth and they don't feel it. That's, that's, that's pretty what amazing. The, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty quick learning that's, curve. That's what the typical person says, yeah. You take a person who's been wearing a full denture, a big chunk of plastic in their mouth, and they go to a horseshoe-shaped, mm -hmm. much smaller yes. uh, bridge that is fixed in place and doesn't move and that disappears in their mouth in about one day. Yeah, it's pretty quick. The people that take a little bit longer to adjust are the people who have their own natural teeth and they have really bad periodontal disease, so they have the feel of their own natural teeth and then their natural teeth are gone and this bridge goes in and the bridge is a prosthesis and it doesn't 
feel like natural individual teeth. It looks like teeth, but it doesn't feel like teeth. Mm -hmm. And so it takes those folks a little bit longer to accommodate. But, and I know Terry, one of our lab employees, uh, I know he wouldn't, wouldn't mind me saying because we use him as a guinea pig all yes, the time. Yes, he is your guinea pig. But the teeth disappeared into his mouth almost immediately. Uh, I took care of an accountant from Tampa. That was his main worry. And he had been sent by his cousin, who I had done a procedure for his cousin, and his cousin, that prosthesis just melted into his mouth almost immediately. This guy was really worried. In three months, he said the prosthesis just kind of melted into his mouth and he never notices yep. it. It's a pretty quick learning so, curve. Yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll go into our next patient. <clears throat> this is Bruce. Um, he is from Orlando. He came to us from Orlando, Florida. Um, he had a lot of pain prior to coming to see us and you know he really loved food and enjoys quality of life, but he just couldn't eat the foods that he loved and now he can eat anything. Which is pretty amazing. I think his first meal was a steak, so pretty cool. These are some of the key differentiators that we have in our practice when you come to our office in Lakeland. All of our surgeons are board certified in Lakeland. We um, they place the most zygomatic implants um, more than any other center in the United States, um, and we do general anesthesia. Hopefully, we get to see you in you the office. You did a great job. It's Thanks, good to, Dr. Good to work with you. <laughs> How well, long are you going to be around with <laughs> Bianca having had her child? I don't know. I think she's coming back in May. Really? Okay. Or June. May wow. or June. Right. I don't know. Okay. But hopefully, hopefully soon because you'll put me in the spot again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. But thanks so much, guys. All right. See you next see time. You. Have a good night.